Good morning from Chiang Mai. We are starting our time off here by going on what we always do, if it's available, just to get, you know, a good feel of the layout of the city, give us a little bit of history and culture, food recommendations. We are heading off on a walking tour. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. We've just finished our walking tour at Wat Chedi Luang and our guide, Khan, was absolutely amazing. This walking tour is what I want every walking tour to be. He was so funny and extremely knowledgeable. He told us all about Chiang Mai's history and he even deepened our knowledge or really started and then expanded our knowledge about Buddhism, which was really amazing because we've seen so many temples over the course of our time in Thailand. And now I feel like I understand what I've been looking at this whole time. And the great thing about this was when he was talking about culture, he was drawing really upon his own experiences, which is always a great way to go about it. And that also went into the food as I'm sure you all saw in the footage, then we ended up trying things like uh, fried bananas and um, sticky rice cakes and things like that to really help us get kind of a better understanding as to what the culinary experience is around these parts as well. Through that, then we just got a deeper understanding of what it is to be here, to grow up here and be immersed in the culture here. Having that kind of experience of a tour is like gold dust. It's fantastic. I believe the tour was supposed to actually end at another temple, but we may have ran out of time. I mean, this was a three hour tour. So I think we're gonna head there now to check it out.
while we were walking along, I got very distracted by this wooden watt. I think that kind of makes it stand out a little bit. So I was like, oh, while well, we're walking by, should we just go have a look? This place is called Wat Pen Chow. Yep. And yeah, it's just really beautiful. It's more rustic because it's made out of wood, but yet it's adorned in all this gold and green and turquoise mosaics. And there's this huge, beautiful gold Buddha inside. So I'm kind of glad we stopped by and it's free. So why not? We're going to try and continue on to the temple that we were intending to go to in the first place. And if we just happen to get sidetracked for lunch, then so be it. And as we threatened, we did have lunch, but we're now at Wat Pa Sing. We were told it was meant to be 20 bar entry per person, but no one's come around to charge us yet. Let's see if that continues or not. All of the temples that we've seen today have been much smaller in terms of their grounds than the ones we saw in Bangkok, but they have been equally as beautifully decorated. But I think that the temple grounds being so charming and cozy is actually representative of Chiang Mai, the city. Just walking around today, it feels so homey. And I've just got this sense of inner peace being here like i really really like it and it's just a feeling there's definitely a real charm to this place and i think the fact that we've been very much in the old city which has stood for centuries upon centuries really helps with that because it really kind of brings you into a sense of what the history of this place was and that coupled with the walking tour that we've done today has really helped. Um, we even just saw an information board on the way in that said that this has been standing since the mid 14th century as a temple complex. So that should really give you an idea as to you know just how long this has been standing and the empire that was built around it and everything else so this has been pretty special to have come and visited to be talked through and to have walked around yeah one thing i learned today that i just wanted to mention because what you said reminded me of it mm -hmm. was that i didn't realize that initially the north and south of thailand were actually different kingdoms and it took a while until they were unified mm-hmm under King Rama V, I believe. Yep. I think they said King Rama VII of Thailand gave his daughter to King Rama V, and then there was some kind of unification because all kings were called Rama, which is why I think it gets confusing or something like that. But I don't know. I just found it interesting because I didn't realize that it hadn't always been one country. It had been divided between North and South. It's been really nice. Yeah, it has been. But uh, I think that's all that we have planned to see for today. So we're going to head back to the hotel room, get some work done, and then try and figure out what the dinner situation is going to be. Yeah. So let's see what happens. We have a little bit of a story time. It's now 8.40 at night, and we left the hotel probably 40 minutes ago because we needed to go to the ATM to get money for what we're doing tomorrow. I'd actually go as far as to say we left at about 7.30 though. Oh, even earlier. Jeez, we've been out a while. We have. And the intention was to go for dinner and we picked out one place, but by the time we were done with the ATM, it turned out it was closed. As was pretty much everywhere else that we would have wanted to eat. Either that or it was closing up because it turns out the vast majority of restaurants in this city close at about 8 p.m. Or at least on the west part of the city. We're not sure about the eastern part, but it did seem like that is a very common closing time. So as far as we're concerned, definitely lesson learnt. Mm -hmm. We're not going to fall into that same trap tomorrow evening because damn it, this is going to be our last Thai destination and we really want to get some Thai food in before we leave. Absolutely. But this, let this also be a lesson to anybody who's coming to Chiang Mai, if you 
are planning on having a nice Thai dinner, do bear in mind that at 8 p.m. options are very thin on the ground. Or at least do more research than we did. Yes. And I think that we're also hindered by the fact that I am a bit picky with my food. I have some texture problems, so I don't love soupy things. And also, I don't eat much meat. I'm mostly vegetarian. So that does limit us, as well as budget constraints. Because we passed by a few places that were pricey that were open, and a few places that had just too many meat options and no vegetarian options. But I think it just took us by surprise because even in other parts of Thailand, this has not been a problem. And we have been able to find something that we needed. And generally speaking, like that's been kind of the same really across the board in most of the other countries we've been to. So this seems like a bit of a unique thing that people do need to know about. Yes, so we did want to be honest with you. Yes. We've gone to 7-Eleven instead. We have. Saving our butts as always. Yeah. But I also don't really want to end this video on a downer because actually we had an amazing day of sightseeing, learning about history and culture. The tour was incredible. We had beautiful weather. We had a great Pad Thai lunch. Absolutely. Like I, like even despite the experience of having traipsed around for the best part of an hour trying to find somewhere to eat, all that is to me is just a lesson for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it still doesn't put me off the city as a whole because fundamentally what we've seen so far is amazing and it's well worth the visit. It's just, if you're going out for dinner, do it a bit earlier than maybe you'd expect. Yeah, I still have a warm and fuzzy feeling about Chiang Mai. Same it just same. feels homey. Exactly. We're probably going to get an even warmer and fuzzier feeling when you find out what we're going to be doing tomorrow. We're not going to give it away. You're just going to have to watch the video. Sorry. But until next time, take care. And keep smiling.